need me. Welcome to the Ryback Show, WrestleMania edition. I am your host, the big guy, Ryback. Happy Saturday, ladies and gentlemen. We are streaming live here on Ryback TV on YouTube. We are live on X Spaces at Ryback, where you guys can call in live and speak to me here live. And we are live today, guys, on TikTok at Ryback, as we've been doing massive numbers over there again. So we're going to do the show on TikTok today and see if that also helps with uh, taking in some calls. We're going to try to get in a lot of callers today. I see we've got Shawnee Big Sausage waiting in the queue. We're going to get him on and uh, see if he'll stay on. we take some calls today. I've heard you guys, some of you guys, have more callers, more callers. We all want to talk. We all want a piece of the big guy. We're going to try to get more callers on today's show, get your thoughts on WrestleMania and everything going on in the world of pro wrestling and life in general. This show is available on all podcast platforms iTunes reviews are greatly appreciated. If you guys got a moment to swing over to iTunes and leave a review, thank you very much in advance. This show is brought to you by Feed Me More Nutrition, my premium supplement line sweetened with stevia and monk fruit. No harmful artificial sweeteners or colors, guys. Like that Prime and C4. Stay away from that trash. It'll give you cancer, amongst other things. Guys, feedmemore.com. Save 20%. Discount code YouTube20, YouTube20. For the best supplements on the planet and all Ryback merch, workout accessories, ball caps, drinkware, and Feed Me More Nutrition. Feedmemore.com. All righty then. Let's get the show kicked off today. Good to see all of you guys. Everybody on TikTok, guys watching. You guys want to call into the show, follow me. Go follow Ryback at X Spaces on X, formerly Twitter. Come to my Ryback account. You'll see the X Spaces going on live, guys. Come on in, guys. Anybody on YouTube, come on to the X Spaces queue. Hit that request button that you want to speak to the big guy. We'll see your name in there. We'll try to get you on into your questions, whatever you want to talk about. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get the big sausage on here. Shawnee. Big guy. Happy Saturday, brother. Happy Saturday. How are you doing today? Good, 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 good. We're watching the language, right? Because you're on TikTok. We are going to watch the language. I'm going to because uh, they have learned uh, multiple things on there. One, the cussing is not does not help with the algorithm. Okay. Uh, uh, as far as that, so today's language will will be toned down because I want to see what kind of numbers we pull in and if we can, sure. if we get more yeah. people on X Spaces because we're being definitely being things are weird here. Whenever I do the live show, as far as the amount of people we get. So if I can get more traffic in here and we can get more callers calling in and grow this on here and everyone knows it's 9 a.m., I think and I think it's a great idea what you had that this could help whatever the suppression or what's going on on my when I go live on TikTok on, on, on X, maybe this will help out. So we're going to see because they counteract their their, you know, whatever they're doing to your account. Shadiness or whatever, their inability to to like answer questions. Yeah. But 100%. we're doing solid everywhere else. And YouTube numbers have been, you know, YouTube, I told you the like live, we have 212 people right now watching live, but we've been getting six, seven, 800 live in here on YouTube That's alone. Awesome. And, but they don't count that as the views anymore. YouTube switched it. So I get all these live views when we're going live. And then they, once the video post after the show ends, they then reset the views. That's weird. Yeah. How did, how did they reset it? Like It just goes back to zero when it's up. And, it, and I go, well, I go, what about all those people? that Because people are coming in and out the whole time watching. But because I, I also it's not monetized to begin with. So maybe once I monetize it afterwards, they then reset it for the monetization. I don't know. But that's, they, su that's super weird, honestly. To Why would they reset it? when like those viewers are viewing the, the, the video, you know, like, yeah. it makes no sense at all. I, 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 I can't make sense of anything anymore. without <laughs> <doing so. laughs> Donnie, you ready for WrestleMania today? You've got all your gear. You, 
I, yeah, I actually, I was running out naked earlier, uh, or dressed as Paul Heyman, and everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I've got people, my YouTube video on Heyman, where I cut the promo on him, which, again, people can't decipher when, and, and by the way, like, I don't think Paul's like the greatest human being, but I put him over plenty of times if you listen to the show, but I also, though, like, I don't like the guy, and he's done some really shady bad things to me yeah, personally, sure. and to a lot of people. It's not like it's like a hidden, that's not like hidden knowledge amongst yeah, wrestling. To you, right? Like yeah. You listen to the ECW guys, so many of them talk about not getting paid and like he lied to them about their checks coming and things like that. So I, I don't doubt it, man. He's a shyster from uh, Long Island, you know? That's what yeah, they do. Yeah, that's what they know? do. And, I, and so, but like I've, I've, but people can't decipher the, when I cut the promos on my, my TikToks and I put it on YouTube, and like when I'm just trying to stir, like when I blur the lines and like I get the views off of them. And like, so that video is re-going again where people, because I guess, did you watch the Hall of Fame last night or no? Yeah, so, so John actually hit me up this morning and was like, Sean, you got to watch uh, the, the Hall of Fame speech. And I was like, yeah, it was that good. He's like, bro. It was From Heyman, amazing. right? From Heyman, yeah, and I did. I watched it. Uh, I took thirty minutes out uh, right before the show because I wanted to talk you're, about it with you. you know, I'm glad you did because I'm not giving Paul Heyman thirty minutes of my time. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the clip notes from old Shawnee on here. So I have to say, big guy, um, all like just like just from listening to his speech, it was one of the best speeches, Hall of Fame speeches I've ever heard. And a lot of people are saying that I saw. Yeah, it was unreal. Um, they did. He did an unreal job. Um, he gave a lot of credit to uh, Levesque. Um, he gave a lot of, you know, and then mid-interview. Uh, so, like, in the first half of the interview, he was talking about his family and, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, mid he had a box on the podium. And what he did was he took out the leather jacket, the ECW hat, uh, the big phone. I thought it would have had donuts in it, but it's okay. So. <laughs> Yep. Sorry, I'll let you. I don't mean to. He was keeping that in his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you ever see Digit Turtles too? When uh, they give the, the monsters donuts? And <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Jeez. So, uh, so yeah, so he was. It was. It was really nice, and uh, he see, he talked about he, he, bro, like. This is one thing I took from last night. He cursed so much. Yeah. And like he said, S my F and D. Um, like uh, he said, like uh, at one point he was like, if you think ECW spirit died in 2002 with the bankruptcy, then you could S my F and D. That's exactly what he said. And I well, it, did, it, did, it did die, though. It did. When your business goes out of business, it is. I mean. People can chat all day long, but it does. It did go out of business until WWE revived it and, and somehow probably made a little money on it. But yeah, yeah. It, it did yeah, go away so. forever. Then it doesn't matter how many sure. people chant; it's gone. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he talked about you know like how uh, you know a lot of the things in today's wrestling are from ECW and how they merged like hip hop and heavy metal into their. Uh, he said Stone Cold had his first beer down the block from the ECW arena. Yeah. Um, he just mentioned a lot of things that, like, are and honestly, like, I knew some of this stuff. Um, but yeah, like, it was just, it was just very interesting, big guy. I think, uh, you know, if, even if you're not a fan of him, he's very captivating the way he talks. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, he knows how to lie and but like manipulate and say things, but he knows how to, yeah. he knows how to elicit emotions out of people. Exactly. That's why he's so. Yeah. What he does. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. I've always said he's he knows how to do that for sure. No Brock Lesnar in sight. He mentioned Brock Lesnar a couple times. He wasn't there. Jeez. Yeah. Though that it, that <laughs> there was a great. They just cut to a up in a skybox. It's Brock and Vince just in there with a bunch of ladies. <laughs> That would have been the perfect, just cut away and it's like Brock and Vince, just a, like a quick little pan that they are in attendance, but no mention of them. And it's just them partying it up with a bunch of hot, hot chicks. Oh my God. Oh my God. Imagine piss chugs around. Tim the, the yeah, Dunn, 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 Laurinaitis, Brock and Vince with a bunch of chicks in a skybox, just watching the, the WrestleMania, the Hall of Fame. <laughs> 
say though, this is like I haven't been this excited for a media yeah. in a long time. To be honest, yeah, it it is. I I will always put over. It is the it is the biggest and best wrestling show is and is what they do. Like the the production that I've been a part of of mo four of them. You know, it, it's. It's second to none on all that. The production and the work that they put in and the talent, obviously, are clearly amazing. Like, they, they, I don't think people too know. Like, I was just thinking about that today. I was I went in my sauna for 45 minutes and then uh, and showered before I hopped on the show while I'm fasting here. And I was thinking, I go, man, uh, just like how calm and, like, relaxed life is now. Like, I remember the pressure, though, like, of those days of, like, when you know you're going out there. And I was just thinking, like, man – like thinking about the main event with Cody and, and uh Cody and, and Seth Rollins versus Roman and The Rock. And I saw Cody this week. Uh they everyone did all the media and they were the Ariel Hawani, which we'll talk about that as well. Yes, yes. Um, I got that on my list. Yep. The uh but like Cody talking about like Rock's been gone for 12 years. There's in uh, like so specifically too, if Cody's winning or not winning, it doesn't matter. That that main event, like there had there's so much pressure on Cody and Seth and Roman. More on Cody and Seth, because Cody and Seth are facing Roman and Rock. And Roman's always ready to go. Doesn't matter what his schedule is. He's he's a big time player. He turns it on. He trains. He he like he he's always on his game. Um, but but Rock has been out 12 years. And if you remember correctly, when he wrestled Cena the last time, and that was what 12 years ago, he injured himself really badly in those matches. Uh, and I think he had a, a torn groin or a torn abdominal. Like he he messed himself up pretty badly towards the like a middle or end of that match, and that was twelve years ago. You know he's in his he's in his fifties and he takes care of himself and he's but like it's one thing and he's been training, but like when you go out there and you start exerting yourself again at game speed, which is what the WrestleMania like that will be Rock's first time probably really going game speed, and I don't know for sure, but like when you're out there. It, in the adrenaline, you can't mimic that in training. You could still it's go like hard. Football, the same thing. Like, yes. There's a difference between being in game shape yes. and practice shape. It, because know? the adrenaline factor and the adrenaline can zap you if you're not in like, it can, in, you can only understand it if you've done it. You have to one, be in tremendous shape, cardiovascular shape and, and, and just in just overall shape, but mental health, you have to be, everything has to be firing on all cylinders. But if there's anybody that could do it, it's him because he's already done this multiple times with it yeah. but he is a lot older than he was the last time even though physically he looks great it's been he's been out of the game so cody was talking about that there is a lot of pressure on cody and, and seth to go out there they're the two main eventers they're the two guys that have been holding the fort down right so they're gonna have to go out there and they're they're hoping to pull off a wrestlemania worthy main event two nights in a row but this night specifically with the rock added in and you know seth has been out with his knee injury and I think he's he's back here recently, but like there's a lot on the line with this. And like, you know, Roman is part time. Cody's there every day doing everything. But there's a lot of pieces. I was just thinking, though, man, I bet you Cody is pretty stressed today going into like just one stressed in a good way of wanting the event to be successful, as is everybody, I'm sure. Big guy. So um, this is a two part question from me. So. Number one, do you remember your first mania and how you felt going into it? And um, number two, do you think Cody knows who's going to win the match tonight or <clears throat> a surprise to them? So he could. They, there are times when they don't let you know on that. I, I would say my guess is, is he does know. He would have to know with this. I, I would I would imagine uh, – and Vince gone. I don't know how Hunter directly how how communicate how much they communicate, um, but I do think from what I've heard from Cody that him and Hunter their relationship is is quite what good. So my my guess is he does know, and he knows where the story is going as of at least the next two days with it. Um, if it, if it hey if it if if this thing is still the part of the ultimate screw job of you know like I said the old Vince way of like would they really let a guy that left and created their competition and that that has created problems for them, whether they want to admit that or not from keeping talent, having to pay talent more because they ultimately don't like to do that. Like, are they really going to reward a guy that's gone out and done that? I don't know. Could, could, could this be a first of maybe a changing of the way things have been? Yeah. And I'm hoping for Cody's sake it is. So we'll have to see. Yeah, me too.
But yeah. I was excited, brother. I'm on the first one, but I I had a lot going on. I told you before where the it was under the assumption how everything was being laid out. Then I they Vince and Hunter and Stephanie had pulled me aside prior and it, and told me and for me uh, that they would like to turn me heel after WrestleMania to feud with Cena. So it, in in when I went into that WrestleMania match with Mark Henry, it was under the assumption that that I was going over and then like red hot and turning on Cena the next night. And then like the day or two days before, they told me something changed and I was going to be falling on my face with Mark. And then Vince, I couldn't get a hold of Vince. He avoided me until the day of. And then I finally got him in Gorilla. And we had a long time where I told, I've told this story where I finally found him in Gorilla and, and everybody left and we had a long conversation. And then and he just told me, he goes, this is going to be your excuse for you failed as a baby face and you fell on your face. But it was a strenuous week um, because of the creative and everything. And, and like Mark didn't like being picked up either. A lot of people don't know this. So this was going to be my first time shell shocking Mark. And we had to practice it over and over um, the week of Mania. And there were times Mark didn't want to jump because Mark would get like little like trigger. He would get scared because Mark, didn't, yes. he, Mark was not used to getting picked up. And so, exactly. and so he would fight it. He would, pick him up. yes. So he would fight it. So not in like in a way to like try to prevent me from like he just his body was a natural reaction. Like so, I'd go to his like his weight, his legs would get heavy, and like and we were like, Mark, you, we can't. And luckily, and, and to his credit, he didn't do it out there, and we did it easily. And any other yeah. time, I've shell shocked him after he did it, but like, uh, and rightfully so, like picking him up, I have to have control of him. So then it was like that, and then I had to. During the, it was the pressure of I had to get him up for shell shock for the mania and then walk over to the ropes with him at the end of a match with him. And, and that, then he grabbed onto the ropes and that would cause me to trip and fall. So there was like the pressure of, okay, we got to hope that we can get him up to then walk over with him to then pull that off. And then I got to shell shock him again after the match is over, like with it and with him tired. And, but we did it, it all came off effortlessly and it was amazing. But I remember those were the biggest like stresses leading in on top of like what is going on creatively and not really getting a clear answer till the day of and which was a lie. And it was just it was done to kind of to really hurt the character overall long term. So do you remember, big guy, like uh, like besides the, the actual show stuff, like do you remember what it was like, like getting there and like do you have a did you have a lot of things to do during the day or did yeah. you just get to hang out? Like, do you remember that? No, movie? yeah, all of it, so every year it was constant. Uh, you have media all the time, fan access, media, and so like the week and then you and getting your workouts and so like they'll give you your run sheet when you get there, <clears throat> and you gotta they'll tell you like uh, you've got these appearances these days. And then, so you got to, then you can kind of plan your week, like when you're going to wake up and train or if you're going to train at night, because some days you're like going all morning and you can't work out till night. Some days you've got like two or three hours where you can get your workout in the morning. And then the rest of the day is filled up with stuff. And like, it's quite strenuous for most talents on that. Unless you get them uh, more of the, the people that had been there, the longer you're there, you then can get out of the fan access stuff. And then where you're not doing those long three hour signings, yeah. Where the, those are what can you? And by the way, and, and maybe things have changed now. I don't know. We were never paid for those, so those yeah, were. That's what that's what Ryder said too. Like yeah. he had a, like what, one of those matches that you have like in the middle of access. Oh, he, oh yeah. I never luckily. Oh, I never. I would. <laughs> the worst he said it was the worst ever like people just walking by not even caring you know like bro yeah and they did those they really started doing those towards the end i was at i was in a good enough spot where like that wasn't gonna that was those were punishment man that you weren't yes, in it like yes. and, and that's not like Ryder was like it, it like they were putting guys yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it and hunter was. always has like they've always it's because because zach is charismatic and in great shape and he's a big guy, like, and Hunter's always been insecure about guys like that, always. Yep. That's a yep. real Hunter thing, like, it, it's not, like, a made-up thing, so. Yep, yep, I believe it. But, yeah, those, the weak brother, I mean, it, it, it's, and then, too, a lot of people don't realize all the fans know, like, the TV hotels, so for me, and I love fans, but this, but when you're, like, just trying to get your stuff done, and, like, it is, and it, it during the, all the year, I could hide and get hotels 30 minutes out of the city, and like kind of like live a normal life outside of people recognize you here and there, but it's not like massive groups of, groups of people that know where you are. 
during WrestleMania, fans just hang out at the TV hotel at the hotel, oh. like nonstop in Philadelphia is going to be bad. I'm sure it's been horrible all week. So like everywhere you go, people are recording you. And like, so there's like, there's no real privacy on any oh. of it. And like, so if you oh. want to go out and eat and like all the, re- like I would always, I would always rent a car and I paid for the valet. A lot of the talents would just save money and didn't do that. I didn't care. I go, I would do that. And like some of the guys would go with me, would go drive 30, 40 minutes out and go get food and go relax outside of the city or somewhere deeper sure. out of the den. So you can at least have some sense of normalcy and like focus. Cause there, there's so many distractions during the week that like, that was always for me, just stay focused, get the things I need to get done, do my obligations, make sure I get all my meals and get all my training in and I'm ready to go for the event. And like, and so that is what the main thing is for most talents are trying to do that in their own way all week. That's awesome, big guy. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I figured a lot of people listening would want to know, like, your experience. Yeah, right? and it was good. Don't get me I had a lot of great experiences. I'm thankful for everything. But it can be, you got people, like, when you, you know, you've got hundreds of people waiting outside. And you're just trying to get to your car, and you got you got only an hour to go work out before you got to hurry up and shower and go do a three-hour signing. And then you've got to do piggyback things all off the day off that. And people want pictures and autographs nonstop. And there's a lot of people. And when you have time, you can do it with it but when you don't like something they they're not always the most understanding and that's where they're like f you you're an a-hole or this and that and you're like look look i've only got an hour here buddy do you want me to you 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 want the full ryback experience at mania or do you want me to show up about five pounds light i don't know like whatever like you know what i mean but like hey i just won't work out today i'll just come out and sign and go back to my room and get ready and go do my other signing that i'm not getting paid for like Especially when they got thirty things in their hand, and you're, and you're like, "Bro, like, yeah, what are you doing?" You know, like, they're just wanting to. They just want the thirty card signs so they can go make money off of on eBay exactly, off of you. Exactly. Exactly. And people, exactly, and then they exactly. go. Those are the people though that go on X or Twitter, and then they they write things, and you're like, "Hey, what about like?" I told you that I used to stay after the shows, especially when I main evented, and like people would be waiting for me. I'd be the last one leaving, and. um there'd be everybody out there waiting and didn't matter what the weather. And I would sign and do everything for everyone. And, uh, every, every night, man, every night. And then I, I remember, it. I believe it. And every, and then I remember finally there was an, I told you I had a five hour drive and I always rode by myself at, after a point. And so, and I had, uh, I had a long, there was a lot of people out there. So I shook everybody's hand. And as I shook everybody's hand, I go, you guys could take pictures as I'm doing. I go, I'm sorry. I can't do pictures and autographs. I've got a five hour drive tonight. Um, it, but it's nice to meet. And I literally shook everybody's hand and said, hello. Um, and there were, there were a lot of people, Shawnee. And that night there were, there were things on X on how big of an a-hole I was that I, I, I didn't sign for them. And I just remember like, like, I just go, man, you're never going to win in this, no matter how, that's like, not, that's not right. You know? Yeah. But that's, but that's, I, yeah. I want people to understand that like the fan, that that's the, that group on X that goes and does that. And then people like, you know. You know, but then you know, there's enough people out there like, hey, ride back, ride back at a restaurant. And he got our family tickets, like the things Cody does. I've done that. I yes. did that for every every live event. I meet, I've tried to get people tickets because those weren't always usually sold out. And a lot of the talents do that because a lot of the talent, like Cody's a really good guy. But like, I never like broadcasted it when I did it on it and like stuff and, like these, that stuff. And it's like you like you know what you really do and try to do. Then you see what like some of those negative people. You're like God, and then people believe that, and you're like Jesus Christ, man. What can you do? Yep, yep. It's like they pin it against you for something that it's like you're just trying to live a normal like existence. Like most people would have just gotten their car and left and not explained or shook their 100%, hands. And that's where 100%. I'm just yeah. And so you're just kind of like ah, what can you do? You win some, you lose some. But yeah, Shawnee, yeah, before guys, everybody on TikTok, guys, YouTube, yeah. come on over to X Spaces, guys. Hit that request button. We're gonna get some of you guys on today with me and Shawnee. After we catch up a little, we're gonna be bringing you guys on for your questions. X spaces at Ryback guys. The account's really suppressed here. It won't be broadcast out. So we need you to come on over here and come on in and hit that request button to come on. Yeah, TikTok, come on, show out. Come to X and uh we appreciate you guys being on TikTok and YouTube. But uh we would love to talk to you. And uh, the only way you could call in is on X. So absolutely uh, come in and request. Let's actually do that real quick. We've got a new caller right here, RT77. Let's let's, let's, let's see what he has to say here. Because maybe some of their questions are what you have in your notes, Sean. He will. 100%. 100%. RT, what's going on? Just got to hit that uh, purple button. There we go. Yeah. 
Right back. What's up, brother? Not much. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you remember me uh, talking about me losing weight and all that in my hip and all my hip situation? Yes, yes. Well, brother, April 15th, I go in for surgery. Good job, brother. You get a hip replacement? Yeah, I'm going to get, uh, well, they, the doctor is going to be doing like a resurfacing. It was uh, actually done by a, an English doctor that he studied under for like 20 something years. And now he, the, the doctor is going to do it and he's going to do a, like a resurfacing, but it might turn into a hip replacement due to the fact that whenever he goes in, it might, um, it might turn into, uh, uh, depending on how much damage is, 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 uh, inside the hip, but I wish uh, you the best of luck with all of it, brother. Thank you. Thank you. I started at 265 and now I'm at 245 and losing. Good thank job, you. man. Keep it up, brother. Keep it up one day at a time. Oh yeah. But, uh, yeah. And, Dude, Ryback, I remember that Mark Henry thing. I remember that one. As like I could see Mark Henry's face, and I'm like, oh, he's scared. He was scared. Poor dude. And it wasn't his, not, it just he's not used to being picked up. The guy he went his whole career with not very many people and picking him up on or like on my head on my shoulders in a very mm -hmm. weird position that for most people, like I remember the first time I got power bombed, I'm like, whoa. I remember I was like, this is nobody's ever power bombed me my whole career. I've always been like the bigger guy or one of the like, and then it was like, and then once you figure it out, it's easy, but it's like, and sometimes it was like, that was, he hadn't had anyone ever pick him up like that. So yeah, Who we pulled it up. Who was the first person to power bomb you, big guy? Uh, Do you remember? Well, the shield out with the triple, but that one, the actual Cena power bombed me in our three stages of hell match, I believe. And, wow. and it, not and my, that one, that actually knocked my head, and like it was, a, it was a pretty stiff move on that. Just and it was, just the way it was. The shield yeah. one I took many times, which that was pretty not bad. There are a couple times depending on, but uh, the like Cena drove down pretty good with it, which can can rock your head. And it just yeah, and uh, but we were fine. Everything was good with it. But that was just different, like because you're not used to like you're going put your head down there, and then you got to like jump at the like. And then you got to sit up at the right time. Like I had to power bomb Kane, and Kane's like very like I don't know if anyone ever power bomb Kane. And like I remember he, I did power bomb him through a table, and it was uh, we barely got it because uh, on the sit up portion, I think he had I you need you need people to help you on the sit on the sitting up on that. And like and uh, it was he was a really really big guy, and we got him up bro, just he's a big dude, man. I can't people believe to, that you got him. Bro, it was, it was, and I got him, I power bombed him through a table. I didn't get him all the way up. I didn't get him vertical, his head, but I got him up high enough to get him over the table on it. And that was, cause like, if the weight is like dead weight, like if the guy's not sitting up and it's like, and he's, it was at the end of his career. Like it was crazy even having to do that, but they wanted me to power bomb him. And it was like, we pulled it off. You know, remember like when uh, Nash power bombed the giant and, but he, yeah, yes, he, yes, he yes, dropped him, exactly. but it, it was on his head. Cause he didn't. I got, I didn't, we, I landed Kane completely flat, but we didn't go up all the way vertical because it, it's like big show. Like it, nobody's ever, the fact that Nash was even able to pull that move off to like halfway is insane because it's, it's just getting, it's crazy. People don't understand. Like it's some of those big guys. It's just, uh, they're not, they're, got they're him up enough so that he wouldn't get hurt. Yeah. So and we pulled off the see. move and like, if I would have not got him up high enough, we would have missed the table. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. Sorry, Kane. I'm dumb as F. <laughs> All right. RT, anything else on you? Any other questions today? No, dude. But uh, hey, I hope to see you back in the ring, brother. Thank you, buddy. Uh, I appreciate that. And, and good luck with your, your procedure. And keep us up to date afterwards on how it's going. Will do, will do. Y'all take care. God bless. You too, RT. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, man. All right, guys. RT calling in. Thank you very much. Good luck with everything. Shawnee, what were you going to say, too, before we take another caller 
on uh, about the um, the were you on your notes? Do you have something on the Ariel Hawani with the punk and, and coach? Yes. So I, I, I actually watched um, the whole podcast for the show. Okay. Um, and, uh, man, I, I don't care what you feel about Ariel or, or, or Phil. Um, it was a great interview. Okay. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, he absolutely roasted Tony at AEW, which I didn't like because I feel like uh, the thing with Phil is he wherever he is, he will play that side, right? Like I know that's yes. human nature, but like it's just it's it's a very shady two faced move yeah. that people do. Like you know, um, but he basically said like Jack. Um, for those who don't know, uh, like the guy that he had um, beef with was Jungle Boy, and Jungle Boy's a younger wrestler. He's Jack Perry from Nine Hundred Two on O's Son. And he was going out here doing all these crazy stunts and he wanted to basically, they had a rental car and they wanted to break the glass on the rental car. And, um, so the Tony Schiavone was, and other people were telling him no. And he was like, no, I'm doing it. That's it. I'm doing it. And Tony Khan, I don't know. I guess Phil uh, ran Collision at one point, where he was like one of the, the producers or managers or whatever. Okay. Which to me is like, if you're a wrestler, why would you be a manager as well? Like, it makes no sense. Yeah. And what happened was they told um, uh, Tony Schiavone ran instead of going to Tony Khan, they ran to Phil and was like, "Phil, can you deal with Jack for us? He's saying that he's going to do this stupid stuff, uh. and we don't." We don't want him to use real glass because people could get hurt. Then um, he also said something about, and you would know this more than me, but he said that um, wrestlers get bad reps with rent-a-car companies um, when they do stuff like that. Where, like, if they if it comes back without windows and stuff, you know, they, they'll, they're they hesitant to rent out to wrestlers in the future, right? It could so, be, yeah, yeah. You definitely. I never had any of those issues. I never heard that, actually. Because I never knew rental cars. I never knew the company. Usually, WWE, if they ever did any stunts, would would have that all taken care of. Would have the car already. So yeah, I guess this was a this was different. In the, yeah, this is a different. Yeah, how they're ever they're handling it. I would not. I yeah, that's news to yeah, me. I would not use a rental car for sure. Definitely, know? unless unless the bad. owner like had that talk, like that was discussed. You know what I mean. Like, yeah, we're renting the car. You told them, hey, I'm going to You pay for it in advance, or like the company does that, not the wrestler. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a jackass. I don't know if you remember the first jackass movie, but that's what they did. They rented a car, they destroyed it, and they brought it back. Yeah, it's not like you're going to do. Remember the old the Vince McMahon Stone Cold when they put the concrete? It's not like I'm going to take my hurt my, my budget rent a car, and we're just going to do this concrete stunt, and then I'm going to like just try to re tow the car back. And like, guys, just bill me for the, like. You know, it doesn't work that you usually work that stuff out. And they, like, exactly. and the, the, the companies do that. It's not like me and, and Jack at the counter, like, trying to, to, to get convince Steve, like, hey, Steve, is it cool if we return this car with 10 tons of concrete later on? Just, just bill us. So then what happened was Tony Schiavone went to Phil to, for Phil to handle it because he was cursing. Uh, Jack was cursing and yelling at everybody. Jesus. And obviously this is per Phil, right? Yeah, you know, this is coming from. Um, this is Phil's side. So, so yeah. He said that Jack was cursing and screaming at everybody. So he went down and politely spoke to Jack and said, Jack, I don't think this is smart. You could get hurt. Other people could get hurt. Okay. It's not something I think you should do. And he said that he said, okay, I won't do it. Like he was very cool with punk and he okay. said, no, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, apparently something happened where he was like, fuck that. I'm still doing it. And he still did it. And then they clashed and blah, blah, blah. They had the whole yelling thing. And um, Tony, uh, he said he said he just put him in a chokehold. No punches were thrown. Okay. Jack, he put Jack in a chokehold. He said Tony wasn't near him. So I don't know how Tony feared for his life. Um, but he said Tony was like a, away from them. Um, so he was a little bit confused by that. And uh, that's basically all he said. And uh, he said, why? He goes, it's not even a real company. Like when you have, like, you can't even go to the real boss. He's like, he's a good person. But as a, as a company leader, he's not a leader. Like he doesn't have any balls. That's basically what he said. Okay. And, like, in, 
And I agree with him on that, to be honest. Like, you can't be fr- – my dad always told me, you, 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 I'll be your friend when, I, when you get older, but yeah. as of right now, I'm your dad. Yeah, and I know that's a weird comparison, like, but it's the truth. When when somebody looks up to you, you can't be their friend all the time. You know, you have to yeah. give them disappointing news. You have to get, you know, maybe give them a critique. When you feel like you're friends with somebody, they take advantage. That's the problem. One, yes, and that's it is that is a real thing. Um, and so I don't know. I've heard though, for, so I don't know. And again, that's coming from from Punk. So and again, yes. and I I know that he has uh, an innate ability to lie. I do know this. I know this firsthand. So it's then, it's like, well, what is he? He will then lie and say certain things to make himself look like the victim or to look better. He is is notorious for this. So that is, that's questionable certain things. Like, I, I, like, it's just, it's coming from him. So I've heard from other people though that however, I've heard nothing but great things that Tony's great. I will say this and like, the guy though is still young and he's very new to all of this. Yes. So he's like, this is like, if you're like looking at Vince's first three or four years in the business, like you don't even have a lot of that documented because it was like, so things were so different back then. Whereas things are so clear, like people have access to things, but like they are like, he's got a lot on his plate. There's a lot yeah. going on. And Vince had a head start. I don't care what anybody yes, says. He did. Yes, I know. I know his dad. You know, ran the New York territory, and it was territories back then. But all the wrestlers looked up to and knew his dad. Yeah, and they trusted. And he'd been him around the business. And, good guy. Yeah. So it's it's, it's but <clears throat> I just think that there's definitely they're gonna they're gonna do nothing but continue to improve and grow. And I think the way that Cody went on there and in Cody. And that's what I and I made my tweet on it with with that and like how one guy actually cares about the business and, and bettering it and can go out there and and give two compliments and not not bash the other place that he left. Whereas Punk will like everything Punk said bad about WWE, he tucked his tail between his legs and he tried to leave AEW and go back there, which that that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. He went backstage. You don't go backstage to go. Like, by the way, and I'm gonna because Punk had mentioned something I'd saw about going people over there were upset with him for going backstage to say hi to friends with that. Yeah. He went there to try to get a meeting was what he did. You don't go back. Okay. I see people when they're in town, I go meet them somewhere, go meet them for lunch or go like, like in Ziggler all the time when they were here in town or different, like you meet them off site. I don't like use, I don't go, Hey, I'm just going to go backstage. And so I can go come say hi. And like, you don't do that, especially if you have, issues with a company, which you always said, you don't go backstage unless you're trying to talk and resolve issues or get a meeting. Like that's, 100%. that's 100%. usually why most people show up backstage. A lot of former talents are, they're there to try to be seen and get rehired or do something like with that. So like that's him, his ego, bro. That's his ego, yes, 100%. but this is where he lies and he'll try to say things to make him then they were mad and they, they thought I betrayed them and blah, blah, to make himself the victim. This is what he yeah. does on it to try and he knows that he has a large enough fan base where they're so brainwashed by everything that they're going to believe everything that he says with it yes. so he 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 was looking for a way out to begin with and and I that's why I think even like I can see him completely initiating and, and all that and in making that physical himself to try to get fired from them so that he can go back to WWE if he wanted out which I'd heard he'd wanted out prior so and that company gave him everything Gave him his own show, gave him all the money in the world for that, and he stabbed him in the back. They didn't stab him. He he stabbed them. And then everything he always said about WWE, he went back, and now he's putting them over for how great they are and this and that. And it's just, it's wishy-washy. And that didn't Oh, he also said cult went up to him at a show, and he said, obviously, him and Colt Cabana used to be best friends, for those who don't know. Uh, Colt is a great guy. I've met Colt hundreds of times. He's I've hung out with Colt. He's a great dude. Um, and he said that Colt went up to him at an AW show and was like, hey, like, I just want to come up to you because I don't want things to be weird. And Phil said that he looked at him and said, I'll never talk to you without a lawyer present. And that and that's that's what he said. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, what the, like, bro, if he's messed up in the head. And then he told another story, Phil, about after the big fight that happened, 
that like um they a security guard came in and he was sitting alone in the locker room watching something and um he had a feeling they were going to ask him to leave so the head security guard i guess which he was cool with came in and he he's like i i knew he was coming in to kick me so um i asked him i said scott do you want me to leave like will it make your job easier again that's manipulation like yeah trying to seem like he's the good guy yeah like oh you want me to leave to make your job Easy. I don't think the security is going to have any problem getting rid of you, Fragile Phil, by the way. Yeah. Are you going to try to I don't want to. I'm going to make things really difficult here. Force my will upon you. He's going to press his Pepsi tattoo. I'm 0 2 in the UFC. I've done some training. I hate to let you know that security guard work ain't going to go too far on me. That's how he thinks in his head. I'd rather choke on success than than whatever on brother. You choke all the time, bro. God, shut up. <laughs> but I, I definitely listen. It was a great interview. I, I, I want everybody to watch it and make your own assessment of it. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I definitely have seen him and noticed that the way he manipulates a story. Yep. He always comes out as the good guy, and there's something yeah. wrong there. Yes. It's like he did it when he did it on the table spot with the he lied and said the, that there was no padding. It was concrete. That way, it just like he does things, he'll manipulate little things or that to make himself as much of a victim. Or like I twisted my pelvis. That was never, never happened. He never twisted. I had never got punished. Nothing happened from that. Like because it fell on padding, but he did it because he knew people would believe to try to make himself look like the victim. Like, which by the way, yeah. everybody twists their pelvis every match out there, taking all the bumps and turns. Of being a pro wrestler like i've never seen a bigger whiny or cry baby in my life that this is why it's just I, I honestly think his karma and like i think he's just going to continue to get hurt over and over and over again and this is his karma for being the big the, the way that he's been his whole life like yeah, I, think, I think i think him going back to the wwe showed kind of what person he could be right under that administration and things yeah with everything and like but even like sure. after the, he had everything at the other company He's just, he's a liar. Everything he wants wrestling to be better, why wouldn't he have done it at AEW? That's what everything, yeah. he had the ability to, to bring that change, but it's never been about that change. It's always been about him lining his pockets as much as possible. That's what, and yeah. it's just be transparent about that, but he lies and he, he manipulates people. Hey, let me buy you ice cream, guys. Like, it's, it's so crazy, the levels of like, here, have this ice cream, guys. I'm your best friend. Like, it's insane. It's insane. But. He did say one more thing, big guy, um, before I forget. He said that um, after uh, he was hurt, uh, I think that he hurt his tricep or something like that, I believe. Um, not the one that he's hurt now, the other one. And um, it came off the bone. And Ugh. he said that the AEW didn't help him at all because it was after the point that, that the fight happened and stuff, I guess. Yeah. Um, and it was six months. They didn't help him find the PT office. Um, they didn't set him up with a doctor. Uh, he was saying all stuff like that. So he said that where in like, they have no protocol, like where in WWE, you have a doctor, you know, now after all the stuff with you and Phil and cult came out, like they fixed that. Right. You know, I'm sure they fixed it. Yeah. Um, be, so That's, now, but like, they, the AEW though has Dr. Samson, who was a WWE, who I got along with really well. He left WWE while I was there, but he was my, my favorite doctor when he was there. He was, and he oh, okay. was, he's, okay. a, he's a good guy. Like he was, he was solid with that. And he went over to, to AEW. He's there. He's the Jack doctor. Like he's in good shape. He works out. And, uh, he, uh, I, I have a feeling that that's just Phil manipulating. Once again, my bet, my bet would be that Phil was being cranky crybaby Phil, not talking to anybody. And so they probably just like, he probably reached out. He probably didn't return their calls or like, that's like the right, he said he didn't talk to anybody for six months. Yeah. So, so right. he's right. this is what people yeah. that like how can they set stuff up if you won't talk to them? Like this 100%. is this is where I'm like I'm telling but he will manipulate that to then put that and make them where people will believe they have nothing in, in like how many other people have been injured there? I guarantee you a lot when they've all been taken care of. So why mysteri sure. mysteriously sure. with him there's no protocol in place? It's because he yeah. probably cut everybody off like he does, how he's cut people off in WWE, where he caught, he quit talking to people that were supposedly his friends because they stayed working for WWE. This is just how ridiculous he is. 
Like, just picture me. I've had all my things, like my issues with WWE, right? I've never once had a falling out with any of my buddies for working for WWE. I don't like, I don't like, I, I, yeah, I would be insane to think like that for them. Hey guys, stop earning all your money and sacrifice everything to still be my friend because I, I feel a certain way. I had certain things happen, but that's how he is. And he cut yeah. people off because they didn't respect him more than them cutting off their way of earning a living. Like it. He mentioned that he, he yes. mentioned that he said I had to cut off friends because I didn't know who I could trust at the time. That's yeah. what he said. Yeah, but that's what and that's 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 crazy on that. Like it's I them, agree. You, then yeah. they're not your real friends. Like that's like what does he think they're giving? Like they're they're they 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 are licking information to WWE. Yeah, like they're running back to Vince, like hey, like Punk told me this. Do you think you Kofi's know? running back and telling them after somebody if you've been friends with for ten years or like then like is that really a friendship if you don't really trust them? That's just more. He has 100%. he has just trust issues and insecurity issues, and but yeah, so yeah, but that's it. That's that's that was the whole interview, and Ariel Hawani didn't hold back. And uh, honestly, he's a great interviewer, man. He's a great. I know he does a lot of UFC, but he also has done wrestling interviews. Yeah, and uh, he he hits the mark every time for me. Um, because he's got he his finger on the questions. pulse. Yes, he asks the questions that people want to know. And yeah. That's what I like about him. He's got his finger on the pulse of, of knowing um what questions are gonna get are gonna get clicks and, and get people interested on social media. He knows uh he knows uh how to ask those questions for sure. hundred percent, big guy. hundred percent. But Cody, I thought Cody came off very well in all of his stuff. By the way, Cody's bus, we're gonna take another caller here. And guys on TikTok. YouTube, come on, come on over to at Ryback on X, formerly Twitter. X Space is live, guys. You want to come in? You want to ask a question on the show? Come on in here. Hit that request button on X Spaces at Ryback. Um, Cody's bus caught on fire. Do you hear anything about that? Yeah. So I saw, I saw the, the, I saw the, the, the tweet, but I was thinking, like, was it a work? And that's why I like it because. Like, if it was a couple of years ago, I would have been like, oh, this is definitely a work. But, like, right now, I'm, like, confused because I don't know if it's a work or not. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't look enough into it. I just saw that they, in the, they said there was his fire, his bus cover. But he announced it on the McAfee show. I thought I saw the clip on, on X when he said that. So I was like, ah, that's kind of a weird, like, but he didn't go into a lot of details. And, and like, there was... I feel like if it was a work, there would have been. Was there footage of it like on fire or anything, or no? No, there was nothing. Nothing. He just thanked the Philly Fire Department, which I thought, like, if he's going to do a work, he'll thank the Philly Fire Department and just let them know, like, hey, I'm going to do this or whatever. It might be real that maybe him and Brandy were having a few drinks on the bus at night and then forgot they were cooking something on the stove. (laughs) And uh, so the bus went up in flames. Or The Rock is doing some really good heel work here. Yeah, Rikishi. This is the this they're setting up storylines here for post mania for who set Cody's bus on fire. <laughs> Imagine Rikishi pulls up in a limo. I did it for the Bro, that would be great. That would be great. Oh man, who I would love it. Win, big guy? Like in your gun of guts. Like, do you think Roman loses and and they don't beat Hogan's record, or do you think Cody wins and uh, like what when you're gut of guts? What do you? Think? Um. So okay, one thing I said: Are they announcing does Roman beat Hogan's record? And maybe somebody on YouTube can, or if you know, are they announcing that he beats Hogan's record tomorrow? Is that a real thing? I saw I saw that online that they are gonna, that that he supposedly is tomorrow the date that he passes Hogan. Or no? Oh, can someone in the comments let us know? Because that would be very interesting. Can somebody confirm or deny that? What is the official day that he he breaks Hulk Hogan's championship reign? Oh, John said Hogan's record for Mania main events, not the title reign. Oh, okay. So then that isn't so. Thanks, John. Th- okay, thank you, John. Very, very good information. Um, you know, it, the Roman thing is so. Just look at it like this: they tried to save Cody and not put him in the spot to lose again by doing The Rock supposedly, right? By putting The Rock in there. And then the fans crapped on it, and WWE made the change supposedly based off how what, how they're how they're doing the interviews, what I've heard from Hunter and, and The Rock and people. Like, they were going to go forward with Rock Roman with that. So that tells me that, that Roman was never probably losing. That was to go over on The Rock, and Cody 
was they were saving Cody from having to lose two manias in a row with that. Like, I don't like, so are they now? And the fact they're doing two nights, this can go three different ways. Cody gets the win on night one and has a big WrestleMania moment of winning of that tag match, but then gets screwed night two and Roman continues on the reign. Or two, Cody they, and them, they get they they lose night one tonight, and then Cody has his big baby face moment finally pulling this off tomorrow, which I personally hope I hope for his sake they do with it. But also in that, there's that Damian Priest can cash in and then ruin that moment and Cody's back chasing the title all over again, right? So like I don't know what their story like. I don't honestly, I I am excited because I don't know what the I don't know where this is going to go. I hope for like the sake of Cody, he wins and could have his big moment. And then Damien doesn't cash in. But like, I, part of me wants to see that just to see how people react. Yeah. I, I want to see if people riot. Like, I want to see if that Philadelphia crowd goes over the barricades. Do you want to see Philadelphia burn? Really, I want to see Philadelphia just go up in flames. <laughs> I want to see how serious the marks really are. How much do you really love Cody? Are you willing to go into the city and into the into the, like how they did during like during the, the elections prior? Are you guys really really willing to risk it all for Cody? Like how deep are you guys into this? <laughs> like I want to see, but like, or is this like because like, hey, look, if they just win and he has his moment, that is great, and like. But there's so many different ways that like the show could end to be like in chaos. And I think a lot of people are like really intrigued to see because you see like that the, the Cody crybabies and whatnot. Like just yeah. imagine, just to just hear me out. He he wins the, against Roman and he doesn't even get to touch the title or do have the celebration. And you're like one, two, three, and like and, like everybody has that that huge uproar, and then within seconds. Damien Priest music hits and he comes running out and he just boom, 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 one, two, three. The utter disbelief and shock everyone will be in. And then like, and everybody just hightails it out of there and leave Cody in the ring, crying in the middle right there with the Philadelphia crowd that he doesn't even get to hold up the championship. Like, and ha have his mom come out and cry with him. Yes, oh like, and, God, but like, be... I would love that if the goal is to pay it off with him winning eventually. Like, yes, but sure. I, I hope for his sake, because I like this has gone on so long. Because God forbid an injury or something. Like part of me just wants it to get over with, so he has it and like it's over for him as somebody that's yeah. been his friend. And like I would like to see him just have his moment with it. But like the the little you know the the, the there's so many different ways this can go. And like you like too like it, it, it hell like what if it's still like it is his punishment and he loses night one and he loses night two. Like like it's. People that it's gonna happen. I, it's gonna, in my opinion, the guy. It's gonna happen. It's just when, yeah, right? I think like so. that's my opinion. I don't think he would have signed back if they didn't agree to something like that. You know, I don't know though, because um, I'm telling you, some people though have a weird like. This is a, it was a Vince thing though. People have a thing they wanted. Like I guarantee you, Punk has it as well. They like he he they want Vince to pick them. They want they want Vince's approval. Yeah, like that father complex. Yes, I'm telling about. you, this yeah. is a real yeah. thing. And like, so a lot of guys will make bad decisions. And he, Vince, is, we've always heard how manipulative Vince is. And Vince can make you think he'll fly to your home to just get you to convince. And they will give you the world to then put a knife in your back. And we saw it with like, they'll get people to sign back like Goldberg. And then they'll get you back later on. And they'll turn people, they'll find ways, like they'll leak stuff out to turn people against you. Like with things, I'm like they'll or they'll put you in. Have you do like I've just seen? I know when they're doing certain things, and then well, they can get the fan base to turn on you when they want. They very well can very well spin things around and then start putting heat on Cody the moment they want. Like this is yeah. this is what they and they've yeah. done this over and over and over. I'm hoping for the sake of change that this is going to stop. But all of Vince's pieces are still there outside of yeah, Doug. I just, I, I, it seems better to me, to be honest. It seems better, and I know Paul I want to believe that, too, yeah. I know Paul isn't the perfect person. I know he's not. You know, I know that you've had history with him. Yeah. But I do think he loves the business. And that's like, 
I, I I hope and 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 he's been doing a great job from what I see there and like the writing and the I like you could tell the wrestlers feel more free. Um, they're the WWE's partnering with other indie like GCW like that would never happen. Yeah, yeah, years, right. So I see things that are giving me hope, and I'm holding on to that hope that hopefully Paul just leads the company into this new uh, regime, you know, um, and I just hope it's better, you know. I, just I think a lot of be- people do, but I don't know. I, I think that but you're letting the product of what you're seeing on TV, that's a lot of people, they're going by just that. There's a lot of people, I guarantee you, that are not happy with him, and he's very manipulative and He's he has he, he can be like Vince in different ways back there. You guys only know though what you're getting, what's getting leaked out and put out. People were watching, exactly. yes, and but like and people yes. go by the product, and so the product very well could be and is better by what fans currently want right now. But that's only one piece of things. There's a lot that goes on with that, and there's other talents that are not getting getting the shine that they were previously and like. But we'll have to see. Like, but I, I've heard in like enough people. I know Vince Russo does his show and does different things, and I've talked about it. This Vince trial stuff is a real thing going on. Yeah. Like, it, it, it is a real thing, and I, I believe that after WrestleMania, more pieces are going to be gone. I don't know if yeah. he's going to be included. I, I personally hope because I don't believe that the man has changed. I don't buy the heart attack stuff that he ever changed or any. I don't buy it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't buy it because I just know the things that he has personally done, and I know that he's yeah. still in like from my own situation with them wanting to settle with the trademark and then him being afraid to talk. I just know he hasn't changed because if he did change, he would, he would have wanted to like, he would have wanted to make sure we agree on the final pieces of that settlement that they reached out to try to do not me with it. So yeah. that's how I know he's still like, he, nothing's changed with him because that's the thing too, is like you had your personal stuff with him and you see that also how he treated other people. Yes. Right? So yes. like you have seen more than the normal. Yes. Man. And I just know how manipulative he is and he'll go get things changed to hurt other people. That, that doesn't say anyone who's in the, does this loves the business. That's not say it's like, but there's, there's ways of like, Hey, you make people do things and have them sign NDAs so that you can like fulfill certain things. And like, I just think, I just know enough to where he's, he's not, yeah, he might be better than Vince on certain things for the product, but he's not. I, I just think I, I won't be shocked if he's gone. And I, I think yeah, for, you say it just because the product is better doesn't mean that it's changed like the environment. Yes, right? yes, that's exactly what I'm saying because it's a product of Vince and the environment. Yes, even though things could be it could be slightly better than when Vince was there, and people have a little more freedom. I'm, the, there's still that energy, that negative toxic energy is still present with it, and that yeah, culture I, that. I the Vince culture, and that's where I think it needs to really be gutted out and cleaned out. If it's going to change for like the real betterment of the company, and like I think they could replace what he's doing with with Brian Gerwitz, and I think The Rock coming in there. I think I think that all the positives we're seeing will continue with that, and that there's still enough people there that or have their finger on the pulse, and there's enough good people in wrestling where the machine's already operable and running that those that direction can continue. So. Yeah, yeah, but I get it. I know what you're saying. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go take another caller here. You guys want to call into the show at Ryback on X Spaces, Rojas. Let's see. We're going to take on a new caller here. Let's go, guys. Come call in, ask us questions, have some fun. Let's go, Rojas. What's going on? Ryback and Shawnee, how y'all how doing? Hey, day? what's up, man? Good, buddy. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Um, so for like the first time and maybe 10 years i'm gonna have to miss watching wrestlemania live because i'm gonna a huge concert tonight the black crows so oh black crows are good but i don't know if they're missing mania good but they're <laughs> i like to think positive which i you know get from ryback so i get to um i'll watch shit on peacock and i'll get to fast forward through any commercials and i mean i'm not you know good deal yeah just don't leave don't read anything online don't spoil it for yourself and just watch it later yeah that's uh that's, that's going to be tough. Put the phone away. Brother, Put delete the phone Twitter away. off of you. Go. Here's my advice to you. Delete your social media just off the off your phone, the apps. Go to the concert. Enjoy the co- concert. Be present. You come home. You, you keep those apps off your phone. You just put Peacock on and you watch and just enjoy 100%. it. I bet you 100%. you would enjoy it so much more if you did that. But if you do it and like you're at the event and you're reading, you still go back and watch and you'll fast forward. But 
I, a lot of people, I'm telling you, it's like, it's just imagine going and watching a movie at the theater that you're super excited about. And then like, but you read the, the transcript before the spoilers. And then like, it, it just takes away that excitement factor. Right. No, I'll get, I'll, I'll delete. I mean, I don't have much social justice acts in the, uh, like YouTube. That X is enough to uh, ruin it for you. Trust me. <laughs> I'll, get it, I'll get those notifications off. You know what I mean? But real quick, I'll be in and out. Um, um, I don't know, Shawnee or Ryback, if you saw that Hall of Fame last night. And I know. Yeah, I did. Yep. I need, um, Ryback, you have your views on Paul Heyman. Yeah. And, uh, fairly in another fair and everything. And he's still talented. Um, I've always he, said that. But I'm not, you know. Yeah, you know, if you, if, you know, I know what you mean. Uh, but Paul Heyman's speech last night was I mean, a couple of tears in my eyes. Tbh, um, I like that one. I like the Undertaker one, um, and of course Undertaker's original speech on him. But I feel like you know Paul Heyman's speech was very entertaining. But I feel like I don't know if you uh, remember this, Johnny. But you mentioned uh, went into this whole deal about being canceled, and you can't cancel. Yes, me. yes, yes. I don't know if Ryback saw that. I found that kind of interesting, but uh, so he kept saying, like, a uh, big guy. He kept saying they tried to cancel me in WCW. Then I went and I uh, started my own thing in ECW. Then they tried to cancel me in ECW. I came back in WWE. So he kept saying how he was non-cancelable. And uh, he's like a cockroach. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what he was trying. He's like a cockroach. You can try to nuke him. He's going to survive. Is what he's saying. That's what he's saying. He's like, only you can allow people to cancel. Cockroach in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> he's such scum. I'm sorry. I can't. I'm not allowed to say the guy's he's a great actor. He's great on he knows how to turn it on and get illicit emotions. So he but Where's he's the caller go? Is the caller still here? Oh, maybe he didn't like the cockroach comment with Heyman. Oh no, I, I was uh, he was he had a good uh, he had some good feedback. That was all he I know he wanted. I'm not it's okay. Yeah. Maybe no, maybe no, it was no, between no. maybe you saying the Black Crows weren't worth missing WrestleMania <laughs> and me calling Heyman a cockroach in a trench coat was just too much. He's like gone. He's just gone. Just gone in the wind. That's weird. That sounds so weird. <laughs> uh, Let's take on another Kevin Hayes here. Kevin. Guys, you want to call in at Ryback on X Spaces, guys. We go live 9 a.m. Pacific every Saturday, guys. X Space isn't, isn't going to distribute out my show, guys. We're going to find ways to get you in here. I get massive views on TikTok and YouTube. We're going to get you guys in here. X Space is at Ryback. Kevin, what's going on? Come over. Come on. Share that show out, everybody on X. Kevin, what's up, brother? I just got to hit that purple speaker button, Kevin, and try to keep it to about one question, everybody, too. Remember that we are doing a show and talking to the speaker, please. Kevin, what's up? Can you hear me, guys? We yeah, can. Hey, what's up, Ryback? I'm a big fan, Sean. How you guys doing today? What's up, man? Doing good, buddy. Good to have you on here. What's on your mind? Thanks, man. I've been watching for a long time. Always loved your wrestling. Just, uh, Thank you. Come on here real quick. I just wanted to ask a quick question. Um, I just wanted to know what are each of y'all's favorite WrestleMania match moments? Johnny, go ahead first on that. If you. It's a really good question. Huh? It's like asking, like, who's your favorite band? You know, like, <laughs> um, uh, I I have to say, I think um, I really enjoyed Hogan and The Rock, and I'm not a big Hogan yeah. guy, but I feel like that was so like instrumental to wrestling at the time. It was like two decades of like greatness meeting each other you know yeah um so if i had to choose it would be that one most likely i, I and shawnee i've always said that that was probably that match is, is one of my favorite matches for the energy alone that i'm excited yeah. that's why tonight i think i'm excited the rock brings that with him that, yeah, energy. that and energy as, as hogan yes. did back in like <clears throat> i'm excited to see I'm going to go with Shawnee on that. Like that match is still to this day, reaction wise, and just seeing the reaction of that crowd, like that is what it is all about. Like, and not knowing what's going to happen. And I think tonight that excitement exists. Like, in hearing rumors, like, can you imagine if tonight and there are run ins and they do, they do, or like tomorrow night and, it, and they, they bring out Cena, Austin, and or Cena and Austin or a couple people to try to help out Cody? Like, or like the rock gets involved tomorrow and Stone Cold music hits and like it's gonna be insane. Oh my god. If Stone Cold yeah. comes out, it's gonna break it's gonna break the internet. It will like and like they do something and like or it's like 
they all tomorrow night and it's all out chaos and they're doing all the near falls and and then like and then everybody gets involved and the bloodlines involved and then the rock is out there and Cena comes out to try to help but Cena gets beat down and then the glass shatters and Austin comes out and like that's going to be a crazy moment like with that yeah so like there's a lot of possibilities a lot of ways this can go but I like that Rock Hogan match that excitement you know for me that was I remember watching that and just that stands out. I think Shawnee nailed that spot on. Kev, what about you, brother? What's yours? Oh, uh, favorite WrestleMania match. Um, Me falling on my face with Mark Henry? <laughs> wow. Not on too many people's lists, I'm sure. Right back. You should have went over on that match. Thank man. you. you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take, oh, just put, make it all about me like I always do. Sorry, <laughs> Kevin. Answer the question. <laughs> all right. All right. No, I make it all about me. That gets people pissed off, though, so I like to do that sometimes. <laughs> Go back to 1987, uh, Hulk Hogan against Andre the Giant. He picks the okay. big man up and uh, does a leg drop, one, two, three count. I think I think that was probably my favorite yeah. one. Yeah, that's a good choice, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I wish I was alive. To, I was born in 89, so I missed it, but I wish I was alive when that happened. Shawnee, something tells me you were in the sack just kicking around the, with excitement when it happened. I was I was looking around at my dad's sack, seeing where I was going, hiding millions of other sperm. <laughs> Hitting his body, slamming him in there. <laughs> Kevin, brother, thank you for the great question, man. That was that was a good one. Kevin, thanks, brother. Thank y'all so much for having me. I appreciate y'all. Yep. Have a good rest of y'all's day. You too, buddy. Thank you very much. Enjoy media, man. Later. Thank you. You too. Later. All right, guys. Kevin. Good callers today, guys. Good callers. Let's go ahead and uh, let's take another one here. Mikey. Mikey Amat. It's awesome when you have normal people call in and, like, you talk with them. Like, it's the best. That's why, know? thank God for TikTok and these people where I've got a bunch of hundreds of people in here. And I think it, other people percent. where we're not getting it. I'm telling you, it's so weird on my tweet. Even on my tweets that, like, go like, get, like, attention, it's almost all haters. It's not, it's not yeah. from people that follow me. It's a very weird thing. It's and I'm it go, it's going viral because it's getting shared on other places. It's not it's yes. not from my own followers. Like it, it and only on X is the only place where my I don't get like love. And I'm like, this is yeah. really weird. Like like it's like my I don't know. So no, I agree with you hundred percent. They're not they're not your fans that come and call. No, usually, you know, or the like on the on the, like tweets and stuff. Like they're it, like that go that get seen. Like I even like it's just really weird. Even like on my ones where I wish people a good day. I was getting better, like it's like no hardly anybody sees them anymore. And like I'm like, it's just we I don't know, but let's go ahead and bring on Mikey here. What's up, Mikey? What's up, Mikey? What's on your mind? Yo, yo, what's up, guys? How you doing? Good. How are you today? Not bad, man. Um, first things first, man. I'll, thank you for having me up here. Right back. I used to watch your ass, man, like man, like fifteen years ago. Or like ten years ago. Yeah, thank but, you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, man. But uh, I just wanted to ask, man, if you don't mind me asking, are you completely done with wrestling now, or what's the whole ordeal with that? Because you know, I always heard like, oh, Ryback's returning, Ryback's returning, or like, you know, hints here and there. Yeah, I, I needed you, so I needed a five disc fusion and shoulder replacement when I left with that. So I've had twenty stem cell procedures on my back's one hundred percent. They regrew five disc. Oh, That's shit. never been done, but my shoulder needed to be replaced. And I don't have any cartilage on my shoulder from WWE injecting Toradol directly into it. And I'm cortisone, I apologize. Toradol is for my back. And the cortisone ate away all my cartilage and caused severe complications that I have not been able to fully correct. I am uh, in great health. I'm doing way better. I've got a lot of scar tissue. I'm still working on it multiple times a week. I have not officially ever retired. The post I did was on April Fool's, by the way, for the people. Like, that wasn't... I'm not, like... So, oh, yeah, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't, I'm not, I've already said I'm not retiring. I don't believe in it. I don't care how long it takes me. I'm going to come back in, in some way, shape or form. I like, it, that's what I'm, it's just, nobody's ever come back from this, but it, it's, it's a very complicated and like, I will keep my name alive and get attention as long as I need to. I don't care if everybody else, I literally don't care if everybody gives up on me. I will never stop. I don't care if it takes 20 years. I will. No, hey, that's how it should be, man. Not, not to interrupt you. Sorry, people will like, buy the story once it happens. Everyone will go, Jesus Christ, this guy never gave up, but nobody's ever come back from this or done this. I just like, I don't believe in the word retire. I'm going to keep working. I built my life. I found other ways to make money with my mind other than my body. Well, but like that has not been covered 
the injuries of why I left. And I've been very transparent and honest on, and that's again, the suppression of things haven't helped with that, but that's what's going on. And like, but I will do things to keep my name alive. And, you know, I got my name. I own my trademarks and my brand ultimately, Hey, I would like to go do something and go do a storyline and see what I can do. And, and Hey, if my shoulder is like no issues at all, maybe I'll be more open-minded to coming back more and more along, not saying full-time, but more, than just a part-time sort of deal. But as of now, I could never see that unless I could, this thing, this thing can get fully, fully healed. Um, yeah, fully recovered yeah, but it, it's like, it, it's a very complicated uh, matter, but I own my brand and name and like, I would eventually like to do a licensing deal with one of the big companies for my brand to have action figures in, in my, in the merch and video games and the things I've not made money on with the companies since all this stuff started in 2016. But I want. I want. I. I. I would like to be able to return to wrestle too, to also enhance that. So, yeah, I'm kind really of waiting. To see you doing something, man. Because once a lot of wrestlers that I grew up watching, you know, kind of just fell off WWE. They completely went off, like you know, social media. One time I was scrolling, I saw you on TikTok. Well, it's you know, you're still doing something. You're still known. Everybody, yes, I get. I take yeah. pictures when people recognize me wherever I go. I. I, like, I haven't stopped my training. This is the other thing. So a lot of people, when they give up or they retire or they're done or they're injured, they let themselves go physically. I knew when this all happened, I go, I'm, I've got to shut the engines off to a degree, but I'm not going to stop my my work, my work, weight training and my conditioning. I still do the high-level cardio I did when I was wrestling. Even I, I would say even more now on this to keep myself physically in shape. So that I'm not, I don't let myself go. I'm not just doing weight training to physically look good. My cardio is better than even when I wrestled. So that way, if I'm able to get cleared, the window of a gap that I will need to get in, in ring shape will be minimized as opposed to if I let myself go physically and gave up and retire and get a little pot belly. You know what I mean? And like, and oh, just, yeah. I haven't stopped my way of life. I'm more disciplined now than I even was. So that is why I, I have this confidence in me. I've never lost my confidence. Whereas a lot of guys, if you're out of the game or you stop and like you, you let yourself go, so you lose your confidence of who you were. I've never lost that. And I've, I've, and I've, and this is part of my whole feed me more hungry mindset. So I think a lot of people, there are a lot of people that believe I am going to come back and that's kept me alive. And I'm very grateful for that. But there are a lot of people that have given up on me or don't think that I'll ever come back. But I don't worry about that because. Those will be the first people, though, that go, holy shit, this is awesome if I'm able to pull it off. So, yeah, man, I, I've been waiting for like six years now. For brother, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I mean, me too. Me too. My little brother, man, he's always like, I'm a Ryback. I'm like, yeah, I do. Man. Like, and, and I got him to start watching your TikToks and all that, like your uh, your live streams and all. I know? do believe, if, and, I, and again, you know, I've been out, I know Mick Foley made a thing and made a comment that I need to show up at WrestleMania. Sean, did you see that? I did see that. I meant to send it to you. I sent it to John, and I didn't know if it was true or not. Because uh, He did. I watched the clip of him, but he was laughing too. But I think he initially was making a joke about himself, calling himself a big guy, that he was like saying that he needs to be the one to show up. And then he goes, "I no, 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 the big guy, Ryback. And, like, and then he was like, he was cracking That's a joke. Awesome. But like me and Mick have always got along really well. I love Mick. I have nothing but the utmost respect for him. And I think we yeah. follow each other still on social. Um, Another Long Island guy. Yeah. He's a Long Island guy. He still lives out here. And I, I worked with him. You got people forget, though. I've worked with him multiple times in the main event. And, like, we did promos. I saved him once on a thing. We did a back and forth when I turned heel in, in England. I had a very lengthy promo segment with Mick Foley in the middle of the ring. Probably one of my longest was ones. That, was that commissioner, Mick? Well, yeah. Or he know. was doing – yeah, I think it was – he was doing something where – or he was trying to get through to me of like, cause I turned, it was after I turned on Cena and I was going off on him. It was back, it was, brother, we had to like, we had to hang out backstage and like, it was a long promo of like me doing a paragraph or two, him doing a paragraph or two, me doing a paragraph, him paragraph back and forth. So like, we yeah. had to like work on timing and we got it very late and we pulled it off perfectly. And like, I think like, so like, I'm grateful I got to, he was, it was cool growing up watching him. So like, that was always one of my favorite things I got to do. Cause I was like, that's man, such a cool thing, yeah, man. Like, him being in the ring with Roddy Piper. I, I got to do some really cool stuff, that's man. Cool memory, man. Yeah. And, got to be with Roddy Piper, bro, I saved, I went and attacked Rusev. Roddy Piper announced me. He was Rowdy Piper was Rowdy. Roddy Piper was doing a segment with Rusev when Rusev was still undefeated. And 
that he had a present for Rusev, and I was the president. I came out with a bow on me. <clears throat> and then I attacked and beat the hell out of Rusev on that. And then me and Rowdy Roddy Piper got to celebrate with my – he raised my hand in the ring. Like, it was – Brother, and that was like I look back, I go, man, like this is I got to do a lot of really cool things in a matter of four years that not a lot of people get to do, man. So, and I got to play the top good guy role, the top bad guy role for a period, and I'm I'm grateful. But like Mick, I'm make money off my body for thirty four years. But I'm I'm grateful though, Mick. Though, like, well, just even that, and but like I think people, the dirt sheets run with it. Like, is a ser- Mick was making a joke that he needed to be the one the big guy to come out to say after like to save the thing. And then he was, no, 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 the big guy ride back to kind of like, that's cool. it was, but they picked it up as he was really suggesting. But uh, I do think that's why I was like, man, you, the longer you're out there, but I, I like being as controversial as possible because this is what other people don't realize. Controversy creates cash. Those are really real thing. The bigger my issues with punk are, the bigger my issues with Heyman are, the bigger my issues with WWE are, those are like it makes it that much more shocking if anything ever did happen, right? Yeah. So it's Even like those on TikTok listening, like you, you, you go into these lives where there's drama. Yeah. There's thousands of people in there, right? Yes. And you go into other lives where they're just having fun, and there's two hundred people. In yeah. There. It's just, it's just a way of the world. But I, I like know? to blur the lines at times, and but like even though there'll be truth to certain things and other things, some I go that is I go. That has always done me really well, and that keep. But if you look at all the guys that have left, I've been gone twice as long as when I was even there as Ryback, and I'm still brought up in conversations and people. I'm still remembered. I go so that is for me as a person who wants to go back at some point. That's the most important thing. It's okay. I, I, I don't care if it's for hate because it's easy. Like it, it's easier to be a heel than to, than be a baby face. When in wrestling, you hear people say it all the time. But I've been the biggest baby face, and I, I have no problem. I know I can get that back again if I can get back, but it's easy to get people to hate you. So I'm okay letting the marks hate me and working them even further. And like, I will play both sides of that fence all day long. But because if you follow me and know, you know, when I'm really talking, I feel like, and then you know when I'm kind of turning it on and, and whatnot. So, but, and if you yeah, just read headlines, you, you don't know. Because you were, you were entertaining, man. If I'm Thank being you. honest, it's like, Usually, I find forty percent of wrestlers actually entertaining. Yeah, till the, like till this day. But you grew up. I mean, sorry, I grew up watching you, and you were one of the only ones that actually enjoyed watching, man. Aside of like Cena or in like you know bigger names like that as well. Thank you very so, much. Yeah, man, no problem. No, I'm grateful um, for all of you, man. Appreciative, and it's been a it's, it's a crazy story and journey, and I uh you know it, it's even like the it's, I'm. Appreciative of having uh, access to be able to talk to you guys with everything. So yeah, thank you. Thanks, Mikey, for the call, man. We appreciate you coming. Yeah, I on, appreciate man. you guys. And uh, and just one quick thing, right back, if you don't mind, I do got a couple of questions. If I can, uh, I don't know if you had an email or I can DM you on Twitter or something. If that's fine. The uh, Twitter is usually just I would write them on that. I just we get a lot of different things or IG. If you want to shoot a message over, I might be able to see it on there. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I'll shoot you a couple messages on there, man. I appreciate the time, guys. Thank All you. right, buddy. Later, man. Take Bye, it man. easy. Thank you. Yep. All right, guys. Let me see if man, I can. we got some good callers today, man. Yeah, it's always, I, I really think, I, I think the TikTok definitely helps of uh, getting some different people in for here. Sure. For sure. That, that don't normally come in with all of that. Let me see here. Yeah, it's good because you don't you don't really talk wrestling on the TikTok, so yeah. it's good for the people that want to get that from you. They get this opportunity, you know. Absolutely, that's what too. Like it's because I like talking about other things too. Even in this show, we could talk about other things, but sometimes yeah, on those sure. ch- chats, yeah. I got to mute all the wrestling words because they don't stop. Yeah. What do you, you I, see? Uh, oh. I got this on my list, quick, big guy. Um, did you see Chelsea Green got kicked out of a New York hotel because they thought she was an escort? Oh my God! No, I did not. Jeez. And that, that posted it and put, "You're my forever hosky." <laughs> oh man, that is wait. Can, can they tell? And I'm not that. Did the hotel apologize and like? I, I didn't see any apology yet, but um, they she posted it on her <laughs> uh, on her Twitter. Like I just got kicked out of this hotel, and she posted her what she looked like, and like it was nothing. Like I would I wouldn't have thought she was an. Escort. I can tell you one thing: she wouldn't be kicked out of the Vegas hotels. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
They'd welcome her in with open arms. The uh, brother, they should look into that. That's they should, man. She not saying. You know, I want to. I don't want to say like just not like sue happy or anything. Take legal action, but like that's kind of like traumatizing if you're you're staying at the I hotel. Agree. Like, what are you doing? I, I just think they should. I think they should give her not just make that right a public apology and maybe give her some sure. some credits for from some stays or something. I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking right away a public apology needs to happen immediately about that hotel. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like yeah, you don't. That's not a that's not like a small thing, especially if she's a public figure, well known with that, and like yeah. I don't know, somebody had it out for. her. Oh, and the last thing on uh, what Cardona. Speaking of Cardona, he came in AEW on Collision yeah. Saturday, and he he got to do uh, one of his dream matches for Edge. Yeah, congratulate! I forgot all about that with with with, uh, with Matt. That is what a what a I saw that on on X when it happened. I because I tell you, I forget. I'm not, and I don't mean this like collision. I forget is on Saturdays a lot of times. That it's yes, like yes. I like it is. It just for whatever reason, I'm like, oh wait, collisions on tonight. Like it, I I forget a lot. I'm not used to wrestling being on Saturdays and. On um, the weekends, right? Yeah. I, I, I swear to God, it's the same thing. I don't even associate wrestling with the weekends. Yeah, I don't either. I never had, and so it, it's a tough thing. And I, and I, if I do remember though, I will throw it on just to have it on. Like, but it's, I'm happy that he got that moment and that he got to do Me that. Too. I really hope though they figure out like and can get the ratings really firing and popping off and, and continue to grow. I just want yeah, them to I be as successful as possible. And it's it's not easy. It's not easy. That's for sure. But. They've got the pieces, and if they can continue to get more pieces and and things in place and and creative and you know, but it's not easy running because I mean, the Saturday show they're up against the pay per views always. That like there's always yeah. sporting events on Saturdays. It is not an easy sell, and I, I thought yeah. like it's because I've had nights too, like with the UFC, and I order that or there's a thing. I go, I'm, I'm definitely getting that. So it's only this is only once that's on every week. You know, I'll just catch it if it's on another time or, but you know, very true. It's very tough. true. Let's uh, want to take another call here, Shawnee. Yeah, big guy. Whatever. <clears throat> yeah. TriStar looks like we got a new caller here. Hey, TriStar. Let's see here. Get old TriStar yeah. on. TriStar, welcome to the Ryback Show. What's on your mind? Oh, what is up, big guy? How you doing? I'm well, I'm well, thank you very much. What's going on? Well, currently, I'm headed to Brew Iowa. I'm going to show up to Bobby Heenan's hometown of Eddie Knights. Very nice, very nice. Now, I, I heard you just, uh, I just got in. Uh, you were talking about, you know, I guess with AEW and stuff, like they're looking and their talents. So they got some good guys over there, but. I feel like they just had so many missed opportunities. Like you have Wardlow literally as a sure part main event baby face that literally after he, you know, destroys MJF, you do nothing with him. Yep. Yeah, they messed up big on Wardlow, am I? Opinion? Yeah, that was I we talked about that before. I thought he had all that the momentum and the reactions he was getting, it was continuing to grow to grow and grow. Um, and you know, obviously I've lived through that myself of uh in, in where you kinda the rug gets swept out from underneath you. And uh, even though in his, my case, I stayed in the main event though, and they just transitioned it. And I like switched heel right away with it. Like, but they, they had something there with that. And it was, you know, it, it is one of those head scratchers of what, what happened to cause that. I don't know. Cause I'm not there, but that's not, people don't understand. It's not easy to get over big time as a baby face, especially early on. And you know he was able to do that with everything, and but hopefully they're able to recapture that at some point because I've heard nothing but great things about him, and I like I like the guy. I like I like how he wrestles, and I think that he is capable of of more if they give him more. But we just got to wait and see. Timing is everything in wrestling, and like for people, and I'll tell you this because this is something WWE likes to say is they say they say wins and losses don't matter. This is all garbage. It does matter. In real sports, do wins and losses matter? Yep, they matter, and, and they matter if you are going to get into the playoffs, if you're in baseball or football or hockey or soccer, basketball, on that. And, in, 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 you know, in fighting in UFC, 
everything, you know, wins you need to win to win championships. You need to win to move up in the rankings with this. Can you lose occasionally? Yes. And in wrestling, you have a little more creative freedom to lose here and there, but you need to win at the right times when you have that momentum with that. And, I, and I'll say this, like wins and losses matter because what do you need to do? You know, what, Shawnee, what do you need to do in order to have a championship put around your waist? You got to win. You have to win. So wins and losses do matter. And like, this is something that I will, I will, I've heard Hunter try to say this and this is, that is what they're go to when they're going to bury you on it. They, you can lose here and there if you're going to win the big one eventually, or if they're going to, the story paints that picture and it's a good story. But and this is all talents and wins and losses do matter in the big picture overall on how people perceive you in the audience with this. Yeah. Can you go back even back to the, the 70s, 80s? And like, how, how often did you see when Hulk Hogan was on his mega push in the WWF? How often did you see him lose? Yeah. And then it's not, it wasn't a lot. And then again, you got to have people win. You got wins and losses. Everyone has to be able to win and lose. It's just, it's a very difficult thing. And like, in heels can definitely lose more than baby faces. But again, and like, and again, time talking too is really specifically about timing. Like, you've got to win the big matches when they matter. And like, he's been put in big matches where they need to pull the trigger on him and they're not. And then eventually what happens is that puts dents in your armor and people start kind of backing off from you a little bit overall. Because they're like, well, they're not because the, the company's not pulling the trigger. So they go, what's wrong with them? Why aren't they pulling the trigger? And he had such a powerful presence with him. And he still will if they do it again, if they're able to recapture it. Like, you got to pull the trigger with it. And like, or you've got to stay really involved in storylines. You can't disappear. Where like, they pulled him off TV for periods. And I know he had other things going on. But yeah, that is one of the things that they had that they they did not capitalize on. I agree. Which, I mean, that's not the only thing. To me, the, the problem has been with AEW and knowing guys that have, you know, been in AEW and stuff like Alan Angels. I feel like there's no just straight up direction. Like everything, you know, just seems like just nothing really makes oh, sense. And it, honestly, it, the way I prepared it is if, imagine if BWG had a TV deal. And yeah. In, well, in <clears throat> you've got to be able to, to again, you, to, and WWE has always been really good with this as far as creating stars and and you got to add, add layers to the character um and, and but there has to be a plan in place there has to be a structure storylines and they have to be in the again the the key word in all of this is there has to be consistency and consistent storylines and character development where people get to know your character over time through the storylines not just the actual in-ring action with that and I do, I do believe that can be significantly improved with AEW, and I hope over time that it continues to be. And that's just that's all we can all well, that's all we can hope for with it. Big, big guy, I have a spinoff of this question. Do you think that once you miss the mark, right? Like somebody like you bring in like Wardlow, where you introduce him to the crowds and people are starting to get to know him, and then you mess up that storyline. Can you come back from that? Yes, but sometimes it's not, and WWE will do this, where you, you like, and they did it with Braun Strowman. Remember when Braun was red hot and with the, with the get these hands and everybody, he was really had some real momentum yes. and they didn't have him win the championship then. They had him lose in the, whatever, when he was red hot. And then they, <clears throat> he eventually won the championship later, but he was not nearly as over as he was previously. Got it. Remember? So yes, you can, <clears throat> but you might not be as over as you were. Or but like, it, but to that, to that though, you can though if if there's. But again, this is another thing. Time away is a wrestler's best friend. Also, if you are doing a reset, where momentum can be reset if you're away for long enough, as well. They forget basically, and then yes, like, boom, and you come back into a really high level situation. Yeah, it's true. It's true. That so that is a real thing as well, but. Um, so it's like Braun, Braun coming, if Braun comes back and they put Braun back in a, like he comes back red hot and like they, they, he can get some real momentum again if they like do it the right way again. But if they yeah. don't, then like it, it just kind of stay what it is. He can still be really over, still be really popular, but I'm talking like really like lightning in a bottle, red hot. You got to, there's usually, I mean, it's really tough to, it to capture. Often, right? Yeah. Sort of just getting that hot to begin with is really hard. That's where it's that, that, that. Yeah. 
my family's from East Tennessee, and his family's from Carolina. His dad, his name is Rick Sherp, Rick the Crush. His dad is the all-time home run leader in softball. Yep. And <clears throat> my grandfather actually played against him in the 70s. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, look at Rick the Crusher on YouTube. He looks like a, he's a little little fatter person, but he's a big guy like Braun is. Yeah. I see, where he got the from. I see I've seen photos of Braun. Braun's, Braun goes out and hit and hit the softballs and different things too. He's uh, I've seen Braun talk about his dad with that and post pictures. So that I know that that story is true. I love watching the videos where they send the softballs to the next moon. <laughs> yeah, shots, yeah, bro. It's crazy how they don't like to hit cars and stuff like that. How far they hit, bro. They crush them. I see it. Oh, they do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the fun thing. Grow up around softball and wrestling and NASCAR and college football and all that stuff. So I got to experience all that fun stuff. And you know, uh, you know. I'm sorry, my mind just went blank. But, no, uh, it's okay. Yeah, you said NASCAR, uh, growing up with NASCAR, uh, softball. Um, I, I, I didn't grow up with NASCAR because I'm from New York, and, you know, obviously there's not a lot of tracks in New York, so it's not something that I grew up with. But I've heard from friends that, like, NASCAR in person is amazing. Oh, it is great. And. One of the unsung heroes y'all should look up in terms of the history of professional wrestling is a guy by the name of Roy Welch. Roy Welch is the grandfather of Ron Fuller. As he said, you might remember Ron Fuller's brother. He was Colonel Robert Parker in WCW. Robert Fuller. Yeah, the name he, sounds familiar to me. What was the name you said in WCW? Ron Fuller. Okay, yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> the Tennessee Stud. He's 6'9", 265. The, the Fuller leg lock, which Corey Graves actually uses as a finisher in NXT. That, that was Ron Fuller's move. Very cool. What's funny, is, what's funny is, is that everybody talks about, you know, the bloodline and the Ryan family. They ain't got nothing on the Wealth Fuller family. <coughs> oh, it's a big family line? Mm -hmm. They're more popular, though. <laughs> I mean, let's, we got to be honest here, TriStar. <laughs> They're all in WWE, and they're all they're a little more popular right now. I've never heard of a Fuller. The only Fuller I heard of is uh, our truth, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doubting you, TriStar. They got a big family, but I, I will say I think that they're a little more popular over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But brother, thank you so much for calling in. I hope you have a great day, TriStar. Enjoy Mania, brother. Oh, I will. <laughs> All right, buddy. Take care. All right. Sorry, I got it. I, I had to say it. I had to say it. I couldn't. I love it. I, I, honestly, I, I I wasn't thinking it, but I, I was thinking like I remember a, a Fuller for sure uh, in WCW, um, but I I can't remember his face. You know. Yeah. No. It was. Uh... <laughs> Thing, which isn't a good thing, you know. No, it's, I think though this week, Shawnee, is anything you want to you want to close with on this week's show? Uh, no, I just, uh, I you know, thanks everybody for calling in. Uh, make sure you don't drink and drive tonight if you're yes. going out to watch Mania. Uh, be safe, everybody. Have fun. Remember, it's wrestling. That's what wrestling is about: having fun. And uh, another thing that Paul Heyman said during his speech. Uh, he was going to say sports entertainment and he did, uh, he said it like purposely, uh, like halfway through and then he stopped himself and he said, this is, re uh, professional wrestling. And I really love that about that speech because, um, it is professional wrestling. It's not, you know, as much as it is sports entertainment as well, yeah. you know, people do these things for fun. Like we watch it for fun. The wrestlers do it because they love it. Yeah. Like, yep. Just enjoy it. Take it for what it is. Don't be one of these crazy marks that get upset. Just love it for what it is. That's what wrestling's about. Yeah, you know? but the key isn't to, and, and you're right. And I tell people this, but like I and I, I, I set this out actually in my Feed Me More Nutrition newsletter in, in this week on for the for the discount is like the, don't become a prisoner to the comments and like social media and like x is really bad with this there's a lot of really negative hateful people out here yeah. and they're, they're all online with this yeah. like if we let their mindsets like become ours it ruins our lives like with this 
these people, 100%. we, but 100%. like, even like, even like, I just live in the real world, put out what you want to put out, but don't get caught up. And this is why I don't argue with like the people. I don't argue with the people online over and over and over again. Liam, you want to get blocked? Liam, stop with the thumbs down. Yeah. <laughs> we see your thumbs down and I assure you we do not give a shit <laughs> yeah, I got rid of him don't worry Liam's blocked <laughs> bye Liam I'm sorry you wanted to come on and you're going to throw a hissy fit while we're I've got four hours of live I got to do day later and save my voice I apologize that the show didn't go an hour and 50 so that we could talk to you um, that though but becoming like the like like Liam I'm not going to get involved in it like somebody like if you tweeted something back and forth like they like they're so unhappy with mania there's all these people are going to act that way because they have a very negative mindset in general and they're not even yeah. aware of it most of the time but don't let their hate and negativity or their inability to enjoy things stop you from enjoying things watch the show enjoy it put what you like talk about what you like but like for everybody that wants cody to win there's a lot of people out there that want roman to win right so like there's a lot of people that no matter what direction it goes there's like there's always going to be people that are happy or not happy but if you understand that it's just entertainment, everybody's just a physical actor, and nobody's really winning or losing, it, then you'll enjoy it even more, I promise you. So. Okay, I'll finish with this. I think Roman wins. I think The Rock will try to come in and help Cody, but I think something's going to happen that stops The Rock from helping Cody, and the bloodline will um, have, like, a, not a breakup, but they're going to have, like a, like, a feud within each other, I think. I think that that's my... Okay. That's what I think might happen. What do you think is going to happen, big guy? <sighs> when I told those three scenarios earlier, like, I, I really feel like... I, One scenario to end on. Yeah, God, you put the really put the gun to my head here, Shawnee. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be. I'm, yeah, I. Part of me just feels like the screw jobs in place for Cody, but I'm for me. I'm putting out the positive energy. I hope Cody closes his show. Damian doesn't cash in. Cody wins. The story is complete. I'm hoping for the the feel good. I'm gonna put that energy out there for Cody because God, do I know he needs it. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next All week. All right, brothers. Everybody give Shawnee a, a pick him up, guys, here on X as well, guys. Thanks. All right, Shawnee. Thank you, man. You have a good one. Big sausage Shawnee in the house, guys. Appreciate it. Always a good time. Thank you to everybody that called into the show, guys, with that. Every, every week, guys, 9 a.m. live, the Ryback Show, Ryback TV on YouTube, X Space is at Ryback. Give me a follow. Guys, X is not distributing out my content. I'm being high, hidden and suppressed. We're getting, I have 1.35 million followers on there. I am, I've got seven people on my X spaces. I've got you guys four or five, 600 on the, on the TikTok throughout. We've had seven, eight, we've had a thousand, 16 in here on YouTube right now. So there's, I've got more people on, on X than I do on YouTube. I have 400 and under 500,000 subscribers and we've got a thousand something in here. There's no reason why we shouldn't have more people on X uh, for the live. And I, I'm trying to get answers and I, I just don't know. So I need to, I need your guys' help. We go live every Saturday, 9 a.m. Here guys, the people's podcast, the Ryback show. Thank you to Shawnee always uh, being available. Greatly, greatly appreciated with all of that. And uh, feed me more nutrition guys over on feedmemore.com for the best supplements on the planet iTunes reviews, guys. If you've got a chance, this show is available on all podcast platforms. Please subscribe, iTunes, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Android, wherever you listen to podcasts. If you could please leave an iTunes rating uh, and subscribe and give it a listen, you really help us out on the audio charts. We usually always crack the top 100, but you got to remember I'm being played and watched on all other platforms, so it hurts my audio numbers. So if you guys ever see the subscribe, see the uh, podcast when it comes out, usually 30 minutes after the live is over. Give it a quick listen for two, three minutes. Let's help pump those numbers up on the audio if we could every week. Keep getting more attention. We're going to keep getting more callers on X. I promise you that people know we're 9 a.m. live every Saturday. Keep publicizing it, guys, sharing the show. We're going to keep getting this uh, up in the ranks. So thank you very much. All right, guys, I will see you next week, Saturday, 9 a.m. Enjoy WrestleMania. And until next time, Rye backers, stay hungry. And that's the last bite. Feed me more. Hey, Rye Backers, don't forget to hit that like button.
smash that subscribe and shell shock those notifications for the best supplements on the planet with Feed Me More Nutrition and all the latest cool new Ryback merch. Visit FeedMeMobile.com.